Before introducing a new cat or dog to the household, it's important to consider a variety of factors, including the animal's personalities, their age, whether they have any medical problems, and their previous experiences and reactions to other species. Many people may be tempted to let their animals sort it out for themselves, but this is not conducive to building positive relationships with one another. It's much better to manage a controlled introduction process rather than trying to repair a damaged relationship, and this is why first impressions really count. When introducing a new animal into the household, it's important to give them space to settle in. For a new cat, you should create a sanctuary room that has all the resources a cat needs to feel safe. Ideally, this will be in a spare room away from noisy appliances and footfall, and will contain a bed, blanket, litter tray, food and water bowls, and somewhere to hide if they need to such as a cardboard box with holes in. For a new dog, you will want to have them sectioned off in part of the house, away from the existing cat in the home. Avoid shutting them in one room or too small a space, as this may cause frustration for the dog. It's also very important that any dog has a good level of training in place and is familiar and responds well to simple commands such as sit, down, come, as well as being calm. The most important part of the introduction process is scent swapping. Scent swapping will allow each animal to become familiar with the other scent, so there will be some degree of familiarity when they eventually meet face to face. For this, you will need two separate clean cloths, one for the dog and one for the cat. Take the one for the cat and rub it on their scent glands around the cheeks and forehead. Take the one for the dog and rub around their armpits and along their flanks. Take the cloth with the cat scent on and place this in the dog section of the house. And then take the cloth with the dog scent on and place this in the cat's sanctuary room. Both animals will then have the choice to approach or avoid the cloths as they wish. And by observing their behaviour around this, you can ascertain whether the introduction will be successful or challenging. With any type of scent swapping, it's important to keep the scent topped up, so repeat this process once a day until each animal is responding well to the scented cloths. The next stage is to introduce the animals through a glass or transparent barrier so they can see each other but can't get to each other. If you have glass patio or fringed doors, this is ideal. If you don't have glass doors, you could purchase an affordable reinforced screen door, baby gate or clear sheet of perspex which will have the same effect, or whatever will suit your home and is affordable for you. When you first introduce the animals to each other via the transparent barrier, it's useful to have two people present, one for the cat and one for the dog just in case there are any unwanted reactions. Start the process by allowing the animals to see each other through the barrier for just five minutes at a time. This way they can see and start to smell each other but can't get to one another. If the dog appears overly interested in the cat, this is when you can use your training to refocus the dog's attention and keep them from getting frustrated and fixating on the cat. Short sessions are key. It's better to finish sooner on a positive note than prolong it and have something go wrong. Repeat these introductions over several days, increasing the duration of the interaction by a minute or so each time, as so long as the dog and cat remain relaxed in the sight of one another. If there is significant reaction from either animal, do not progress further with the introduction. Contact your vet or seek support from an animal behaviourist. When we get to the face-to-face -face introduction, it's really important that the cat has the most control over the situation, as they will feel safer and can run away and hide if they wish. For the first face-to-face -face introduction, have two people present, one for the dog and one for the cat. Put the dog on a lead and remove the barrier, ensuring that the dog cannot get to the cat at the full length of the lead. Allow the animals to approach each other in their own time observe their behaviour around each other and look for any signs of stress from either. 
For the cat, this may be backing away, ears down, wide pupils, and hissing or swiping. Some dogs may be fearful of meeting a cat and may display behaviours such as holding a lower tail position, showing the whites of their eyes, or even growling. More likely though, the dog may be overly interested in the cat, and you should watch out for reactive or frustrated behaviours such as becoming unsettled and vocalising towards the cat, or predatory behaviours which may indicate they want to chase the cat, such as fixating their gaze on the cat and being very responsive to movements made by the cat. Initially, allow a short interaction before calling the dog back and reward them both with a treat so they have a positive association with the introduction. Repeat these short interactions over a few days, increasing the time of the interaction each day. Eventually, if you are confident both animals will stay calm, no chasing will ensue and the cat feels relaxed in the presence of the dog, you can let the dog off lead and allow the animals to interact freely. Something that may also help is using a pheromone diffuser. Simply plug one in ahead of the first face-to-face -face interaction as it may help to keep the cat calm. You may also be able to source a similar product for the dog as an added way of keeping them calm in this situation. Throughout all stages of the process, monitor both animals' reactions carefully. For the cat, we want to be looking out for signs that they are relaxed such as normal sized pupils, their ears facing forward, and a relaxed body posture. For the dog, we want to make sure that they are relaxed and not too excited by the cat that they want to chase them, or really pulling at the lead to try and get at them. When introducing cats and dogs, some people may be tempted to put the cat in a cat basket to reduce the chance of fighting. This is not advised, as most cats have negative associations with baskets and primarily it removes the cat's control over the situation by limiting their ability to run away and hide if they wish, and this will make them feel more stressed. If you have any problems introducing cats and dogs, it's best to seek help sooner rather than later. We recommend approaching your vet first to ensure there are no medical issues with either animal and getting a referral to a qualified behaviourist such as a member of the Association of Pet Behaviour Counsellors. We hope you found this video helpful. For more information, please visit our website.